All right. Good evening and welcome. It is Tuesday, June the 21st, 2022, Madison City Council. I want to welcome our guests here tonight. And also just remind everybody that we are streaming live on City of Madison's YouTube channel. If you're not able to be here in person, you can watch it at the convenience of your home or it's also being archived. So you can look at that in any other meeting all at the same time. And uh, like normal, we will uh, start, rise, bow our heads, remove our hats, recite the Lord's Prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll get into the substance of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk, may we have a roll call, please? Tavanaugh? Here. Krebs? Here. Schaefer? Here. Chatham? Here. Bartlett? Here. Dottillo? Here. And Lucy Dottillo has an excused absence. Have one absence, okay. Uh, council, we had a meeting on June the 7th. You have in your packet the council minutes from that date. Entertain a motion to approve those minutes or uh, amendments. I would move to approve the minutes from June 7th as presented. I second the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, thank you. All right, moving on, uh, we'll go straight into resolutions or bills. Clerk? Microphone, please, if you don't mind. Sorry. Thank you. Sure. You're so soft-spoken. That way we can all hear you back there. I should be more like you. I'll try that. Ordinance number 2022-10. Uh, I'd like your permission to uh, move to read the heading as this is the same ordinance, and then the mayor will review the changes, if that is okay with you guys. I move that we suspend the rules and allow for reading of the title and the changes. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Clerk. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana to repeal and replace sections 52.20, 52.21, 52.22, 52.23, 52.24, 52.25, 52.26, 52.27, 52.28, 52.29, 52.30, 52.31, 52.32, 52.33, 52.34, 52.35, 52.36, 52.37, 52.38, 52.39, 52.40, 52.41, 52.42, 52.43, 52.44, 52.45, 52.46, 52.47, 52.48, 52.49, 52.50, 52.51, 52.52, 52.53, 52.54, 52.55, 52.56, 52.57, 52.58, 52.59, 52.60, 52.61, 52.62, 52.63, 52.64, 52.65, 52.66, 52.67, 52.68, 52.69, 52.70, 52.71, 52.72, 52.73, 52.74, 52.75, 52.76, 52.77, 52.78, 52.79, 52.80, 52.81, 52.82, 52.83, 52.84, 52.85, 52.86, 52.87, 52.88, 52.89, 52.90, 52.91, 52.92, 52.93, 52.94, 52.95, 52.96, 52.97, 52.98, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52.99, 52
from $367 to $3.64. The next 30,000 gallons from $3.14 to $3.11. Over 50,000 gallons, the impact was a reduction of two cents from $2.86 per thousand gallons to $2.84. Minimum monthly charge, each user shall pay a minimum monthly charge in accordance with the following applicable size of meter installed for which the user will be entitled to the quantity of water set out in the metered usage per month schedule of rates. A 5H or 3 quarter inch meter allowance is 3,000 gallons, the impact from utility re uh, receipts tax repeal, $12.75 down to $12.63. One, one inch meter, 7,500 gallons, $30.43, reduced to $30.15. One and a half inch meter, 17,400 gallons, reduced from $66.76 to $66.19. Two inch meter, 30,000 gallons, reduced from 107.70 to 106.75. Three inch meter, 69,000 gallons, reduced from 224.84 to $222.91. 4 inch meter, 123,000 gallons, reduced from 379.28 to 376.27. 6 inch meter, 276,000 gallons, uh, the minimum monthly charge is $816.86, reducing to $810.79. Public fire protection surcharge outside corporate limits. In addition to the charges for water used in accordance with the above rates, there shall be a surcharge to each metered user located outside the corporate limits who has afforded fire protection from a public fire hydrant. Then metered service surcharge, surcharge a 5H or 3 quarter inch meter, reduced from $3.64 to 361. One inch meter, $9.07 to $8.99. One and a half inch meter, $21.06 to $20.88. Two inch meter, $36.29 to $35.99. Three inch meter, $83.47. 82.76. Four inch meter, $148.78 to $147.52. Six inch meter, $333.86 to $331.03. Eight inch meter, $595.14 to $590.10. Public fire protection surcharge inside corporate limits. In addition to the charges for water used in accordance with the above rates, there shall be a surcharge to each metered user located inside the corporate limits who is afforded fire protection from a public fire hydrant. Meter size and service, service surcharge, 5H or 3 quarter inch meter, 258 to 256, one inch meter, 647 to 642, one and a half inch meter, 1498, $14.86, two inch meter, 2583 to 2561, three inch meter, 5942, 5891, four inch meter, 10591 to 10501, Six inch meter, 237.63 to 235.61. Eight inch meter, 423.60 to $420.01. Fire hydrant rental fee. Change here is an unmetered private fire hydrant per hydrant, $679.12 or $56.93 per month. Monthly charge for private fire protection using automatic sprinklers. Service through a three inch line. 28.95 reduced to 28.70. Service through a four inch line, 57.48 to 56.99. Service through a six inch line, 95.71 to 94.90. Service through an eight inch line, 172.37 to 170.91. Service through a 10 inch line, 287.22 to 284.79. Service through a 12 inch line, 429.73 to 426.02. Council, the only impact uh, to this ordinance compared to what we had approved on May 17th were just those amounts that I just read. It is still effective July 15th. Uh, the purpose of this is so that we can go ahead and notify the users uh, for the next two billing cycles that their rates are being reduced per the ordinance. That's first reading. That'll go to second reading at our July 5th, 2022 meeting. Next, are there any reports, recommendations, or other business from standing or select study committees of the city council? 
Uh, in your board packet, there is a recommendation for a mayor appointment, appointment to the Public Arts Commission. And we are recommending that Dave Terrell be appointed to the Public Arts Commission. Uh, we did have one position that uh, we thought Aaron Kelsey was going to be able to take, but because of time constraints, uh, he has passed on that. So we are recommending Dave Terrell. His bio is attached. So it would look like to have a motion to approve David Terrell as an appointment to the Public Arts Commission. They have had their first meeting, and now they'll get to uh, the work of uh, creating some guidelines for us to consider in the, in the coming months. Motion to approve the appointment of David Terrell to the Public Arts Commission. I second the motion. Okay, thank you. Any comments or, or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Next up, I'd like to invite uh, Director of Economic Development, Tony Steinhardt, to talk about annual reporting for taxpayer compliance. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, before you is um, a spreadsheet showing you the six companies or uh, groups within the community that have tax abatement. Uh, each year, they have to submit a form uh, in May to uh, to show their uh, compliance with the tax abatements that were set out in the SB1 form uh, when you approve their tax abatement. Uh, I'm pleased to report tonight that all six companies are in compliance, in substantial compliance based upon their reporting and in, in conversations with those companies. So I would just ask that the council move um, the following companies, Grody Industry, Vehicle Services Group, U.S. Premier Tube, Trilogy Real Estate, Riverside Tower, and Cotton Mill Land Owner LLC as substantially compliant um, with previously approved personal or real property tax abatements for 2022. Tony, did you mention Grody and VSG in there? You did yes, mention vehicle did. services. Okay. Okay. Vehicle services. And Grody. Grody. U.S. Premier Tube, Trilogy Real Estate, Riverside Tower, Cotton Mill Land Owners LLC. Any questions? This is a standard uh, yearly reporting. Can I ask them? Mr. Mayor? Yeah, am I not on? Sorry. Not on. There I am. Uh, hasn't this been done historically in the in the um, finance committees instead of at council? Well, it's our first time going through that, and it may have been. Um, none of the standing committees have been convening, so we thought we would bring it straight to council. In the actual certification, uh, the approving body of the abatement has to approve the uh, compliance, so it's it would end up here anyway. Sorry, just request a motion as I stated uh, in a second to approve with the uh, mayor signing the compliance with the mayor, on the, the mayor signing the How, how would you like that motion worded? Yeah. Oh. That the following companies, uh, Grody Industries, Vehicle Services Group, U.S. <coughs> Premier Two, Trilogy Real Estate, Riverside Tower, Cotton Mill Landowner LLC are, are found to be substantially compliant with previous approved personal or real property tax abatement for 2022. I would make the motion as stated by Mr. Steinhardt. <laughs> Second Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Dan will look into that too. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. We do have a few reports of city officials. Um, I did ask Hannah Fagan to come to the council meeting tonight to discuss the upcoming Hometown USA Parade and also ans uh, answer any questions that might come about that, but give us an update on the parade. All right. Hi, council. So I wasn't on the agenda, but here I am. Aren't you guys lucky? Um, so I am here tonight just to give an update on the Hometown USA Parade. Registration does close this Friday. Um, we have a lot of entries. Um, we have more floats than we've ever seen before. Um, 
there's been a little bit of negative narrative out there, but I wanted to come before the board to say that um, this is going to be a fun parade. Everyone's welcome to participate. We have set forth a theme this year, which is a patriotic theme. Um, we've also updated our rules, and which have been discussed prior in prior council meetings and in Board of Public Works quite a bit. Um, we've made some updates to the rules just for safety reasons. Um, the rules that you may see online, um, if you go on our website, and that if you click the registration form, um, those rules are the same rules that we've been using for the Christmas parades for the past 10 years, so nothing's changed there. We just moved them over to the 4th of July week parade um, because they did work well for the Christmas parade and it helped us to kind of limit a couple like vehicles, um, encourage floats, and general, the public has been taking this very well. I'm trying to reach out to every single group that has entered just to make sure they understand there was that adjustment to the rules. Um, Super ATV was one of the first ones because they are the parade sponsor. We reached out, said, hey, we just wanted to point out that there have been some rule changes. They said, there's no problem. We're going to be entering a float this year for you all. So um, again, we have uh, 18 floats, which is more than we've seen. And that's been the number one complaint that we've heard from people in the past is that there haven't been enough floats. It is difficult to enter a float, but um, we have them coming. So I'm happy to answer any questions council may have. How many uh, overall entrants do we have so far? So not including like the fire trucks and the public safety officers and then any of the pageant queens that will and princesses and all of that. Um, what's come through me is 40 entries. I've noticed some of those were a little bit of overlap, so I'm trying to like figure out which groups some of these people belong to. So we have 40 entries, though, that have come through me. Is that more or less than last year? I'm sorry, what? Is that more or less than last year? Entries that came through me, this is more. Now, we haven't put it all together. We'll have it all together by Wednesday um, for the parade announcers, which are actually two of our interns this year. And we'll have the better idea um, because it's broken down with like, here's our public safety vehicles, here's our regatta dignitaries, here's all the hydroplanes, because they are gonna have hydroplanes in the, this year. Um, here's all the princesses and whatnot. And again, applications are still open. I had a couple people call me today to see if it was too late. So still waiting on those applications. Marching bands, we're gonna have some live marching bands? We are, we have three scheduled, which is shocking because they're not in school. So it's more difficult for them to be in the parade during the summer. We usually see them at Christmas time, but Kim Washer, who's our parade coordinator, has arranged to make sure we have some marching bands. Um, did you say we are gonna have some hydroplane boats, we actual are. boats in yes. the parade? Hopefully all of them will be, that are here for the race will be in the Yeah. That's, a um, That's what Kim Washer's trying to get. Because I know there's been some grumblings on social media about, you know, first of all, is the information easy to locate on our city page all the you have parade to do rules is, yes all you have to do is go to madison-in.gov forward slash parade and then it just gives a little highlight highlights our sponsors and then when you click to register all the rules are there before you register and the rule the rules are clarified as you're registering as well okay but if i just go to the city of madison page which is where i always go to start you with you can go to the search bar and type in parade okay so it is easy to find those details. Yes. Um, I know one of the one of the complaints on social media was that some people were being discriminated against. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I can. So we had one group that felt they were being discriminated against because the theme is patriotism. It's uh, the hometown USA parade. So we're requiring all walking groups and all floats to contribute to the theme of the parade this year. And that particular group. Um, became very noisy on Facebook before they had even had a conversation with anyone in City Hall. Um, they then called City Hall after they gained some traction. We ended up getting some emails cursing us out from some people in the community. Um, they ended up calling us the next day. Traction was already built on this. Um, I returned the call the following day just because I did not get to my voicemail. Um, and at that point, I, I talked with them for quite some time. They expressed to me that they still felt they were being discriminated against because it's a patriotic theme. Um, I ensured them that everyone is being told that they must follow this patriotic theme this year and that we want to work with them to ensure that they can be in the parade. Uh, that evening, I finally received a parade application from them, and it, they have not been denied entry into the parade. So I was disappointed that their way of 
getting to us was through social media and stirring up <coughs> some drama and a false narrative on social media, but no parade entries have been denied. We have had to work with some of them. We had some groups that we had to say, hey, our rules changed, we can't allow this, and they've said, okay, what can we do? So okay. we've had, everyone's been fairly understanding. Thank you. And, and so when you say a patriot, I'm sorry, a <laughs> patriotic theme, um, does that mean like their clothes must be red, white, and blue? Or I'm, I guess I'm not understanding. I think red, white, and blue is like hard to like say like that's what patriotism is. Okay. Um, because patriotic is, you know, there's a lot of things that make America, America. Well, sure. So we haven't given any like straight restrictions of you have to have red, white, and blue on. So. It's very it's very broad. That's why I'm saying is that it's very um, yeah, the broad rules are enough that it's what you feel might be patriotic. <coughs> I, I, you know, we've even talked to the bands about you know different types of music that they yeah can patriotic can't, music that we um, want them to, so they're practicing for that they're sharing with us. So and that that one group that told me that um, they just didn't understand how they could participate with this theme. They participated in our Christmas parades with no problem, and the Christmas parade is very strict, and you must be in Christmas uniform, you must be doing this, and they had no issues with that. So we just, I informed them that the rules were carried over from the Christmas parade, which they have participated in in the past without an issue. So the rules are vague, we're learning. It's the first year doing these rules for this particular parade, and a lot of people aren't. A lot of people have called me, they've come into my office, they've sat down with me, the local like Republican party and the local Democrat party, they're, they came and sat down with me to say what can we and can we not do. Um, there's been some specialty car groups that have reached out to me because we do make exceptions for specialty car groups just to confirm that their vehicles can be in the parade. So uh, anyone who wants to sit down with me and talk with me, I'm trying to work through. We want everyone in the parade that we possibly can. We want it to be a great parade for the community. Thank you. And we did drop the fee this year too. There's no fee to register. I might, I may ask uh, if you if you have questions, Lisa. Please come to the podium so we can get it. Can Sorry, you do you, if you, if you wouldn't mind coming to the podium so we can because we're. Somebody was this. asking about the, in the farm mic. tractors, you like if there was farm tractors allowed. I was like, I don't know that. <laughs> so so um, yes. Yeah, so and again, antique vehicles and specialty car groups and that in vehicles, including farm equipment, antique farm equipment, is in the parade. We have a uh, I think it's like kit tractor club or something like that um, and they have antique farm equipment and they've been approved to be in the parade so it's good good um, individual groups using farm equipment as their entry or that's not allowed anymore you know if somebody wanted to decorate a tractor and, and have that in the they would have group. to get special permission first so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that our officers, because we changed the way the parade is, we're doing the parade, we will have the officers blocking the roads to in acting as the barricades. So the idea is for the officers to easily be able to see that vehicle belongs in this parade, that vehicle does not, and we may need to take some action um, just so we can avoid a situation. So we did have, um, like the local Democrat party asked if they could put the trolley in the parade and they came and sat down and talked with me. So again, we're learning and the rules aren't as restrictive as it's being relayed out there. Um, but they came and sat with me and said, can, can we do the trolley? And I said, you can, but can you please decorate it patriotically? And they said, that's no problem, we will do that. And then there's a rule about um, politicians and the thing is we don't want the politicians just going out and handing out their like political material. We want them to contribute to the theme of the parade and so they can still be in the parade. And we've had um, one of the local sheriff candidates, his wife came to me and asked, hey, can we do a float? Like, can we still have our signs? And I said, yep, just make sure it's patriotic. That's no problem. We had a school ask about doing a school bus. They're doing an un Uncle Sam theme. So we're trying to work with everyone. We're trying to figure out what's going to work in the future, what's not going to work in the future. But we're also trying to take safety into account and make sure we don't have a bunch of vehicles just flying down the road which we have seen in the past. So how does that affect people entering farm equipment? Farm equipment usually doesn't fly down the road. That's right, but <laughs> I would still like special permission. They can come talk to me if they'd like to enter farm equipment, which is what that Kent tractor group did. But we did have <laughs> some farm equipment going a little wild last year, um, if you could imagine, with farm equipment. 
So we're working with that group <laughs> this year to make sure they can still be part of the parade. Any other questions? Do you want to announce uh, who our Grand Marshal is going to be that we just learned about a little while ago? Which well, is We I were going to work on a press release, but I can. Okay. Well, never mind. I mean, I can. Well. Mark's ready. Mark's got his pen ready to go. So. Well, a lot, of, a lot of work and planning is going into all of next week's festive. Believe it or not, it's next week, right? It's starting Monday. Actually, maybe Sunday. Uh, but it's, it's coming up very, very quickly. A tremendous amount of work and planning all across the community, and, and certainly with, with Kim and, um, and, and Hannah uh, to make sure it's safe. And some of it's a little different, so we're still learning as we go through, and the whole goal is to make it safe and fun. Yeah, and we're learning like the yeah. mayor said, and one thing I want to add is if council has questions about it, I encourage you to give me a call, reach out, stop by my office. I'm happy to sit down and discuss. Um, posting comments on social media before ever having a conversation with me isn't a great way to actually get the correct narrative out there. Okay. Thank you. So our Grand Marshal will be Governor Eric Holcomb. I don't listen. What? You said Mark was here. He's going to print it. We'll do a press release, but that's what I'm saying. He's here. Uh, we're thrilled about that because it, it, you know there's a lot of demands on the governor's time, and he wants to he wants to spend it celebrating with us uh, in our hometown USA parade. It's fantastic. So we'll welcome him, and uh, it'll be a great parade. Um, moving on. Any comments or questions for Hannah before we move to? Deputy Mayor McGee. Thanks, Anna. It's just like a staff meeting up in here. <laughs> I, uh, good evening, Council. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the Oak Hill project because it's been a while since I uh, talked to you about what's going on up there. I met uh, yesterday, I believe it was, with the owner of the contracting company that's doing the work up there. And we talked through some, uh, the progress of the project plus uh, plans for the park. Uh, we're trying to make a little progress on that as well. And so far, um, the project is going really well. They have, um, if, you, if you've not driven through very often or lately, you really should, it, there is a lot of work going on there. Be careful driving through. Uh, they're doing sidewalks, curbs, driveway approaches. Uh, it's and the, so there's a lot of cars parked on the road because we've got driveways opened up so they can finish their work. But um, it looks great. I think for the most part the residents are are very happy with the changes that are taking place. Uh, we've had a few weather delays. We've had quite a bit of rain and um, a couple of uh, equipment issues, but they're still right on track for what they're. Uh, timeline is for end of August and uh, they are actually getting ready to enter phase two so early on before the project started uh, we provided these maps uh, to all the residents there so they would know general timing and order of the work and what the work would be uh, so they are almost finished with phase one which is the biggest most complicated part it's the far outer edges which goes all the way around, includes all the cul-de-sacs and all the way back out front. So phase two will start with the north side of Oak Hill and then the Spring Hill Meadowood Circle. So um, should go even quicker when they get to those areas. So there's straight lines and uh, smaller areas. So excited about all of that. We have discovered um, there, there's some drain, drainage issues in that neighborhood. We have discovered uh, pipes that were clogged, collapsed, different things like that. We're taking care of all of that while we're in there working. So they should, that neighborhood should get the added benefit of improved drainage. And um, I, we weren't even counting on that. So excited about that improvement for them as well. Um, any questions on Oak Hill for me? And what's the uh, anticipated completion date? Is it late August, August 31st? Okay. Mm -hmm. I will tell you they've had, uh, as with everything else, there are supplier issues that the contractors have been managing very well. Concrete is an issue. Um, there uh, have been, like they were awarded a bid in another 
municipality for a project and 12 days later submitted their PO for concrete and were told they couldn't get it till October. So um, that puts them outside their contract. So it's difficult. Uh, they What they have been doing is put in orders every day and uh, they get about half of what they request. They can't get any more that day. So they work until they're out of concrete and then they gotta wait till tomorrow. But um, I think they're doing a pretty good job and Kenny Washer is doing an outstanding job of managing that project and keeping them to what our specs are. And the uh, park improvements, talk about that for a minute. Park improvements, we're uh, starting to narrow it down a little bit in terms of what kind of things we could add to the park in addition to improving. Uh, we're getting cost estimates right now. I'm gonna get a survey out there <coughs> to residents just to see you know, if they have some other thoughts, but um, we have some ideas from the open house that we had up there on what they would like to see. So we're getting some numbers put together on that. We'll put a bid package together to get that, um, find out where, we're, where we stand on costs for that. Uh, we are going to have the additional concrete gone ahead and poured inside the park because we know we want to do that and uh, shelter houses. So we have the original drawings. We have some additions to make to that. I think they're going to end up with a very nice park. And then I would also just tell you uh, the next round of CCMG opens up July 1st. I am hoping to put together a small project for that one. I haven't had time to look at the numbers yet to make sure that we can, but uh, it would be nice to, they would actually end up being a spring project. Uh, so would like to get another, another CCMG going as long as we can uh, pull the match together to do it. There are a couple of streets that have been promised and promised and promised and have always had to be pulled from the job and I'd really like to get them done. That's all I have. Thank you, Manny. Uh, I've asked uh, Clerk Treasurer Katie Rampy to also give an update to council on some primary initiatives she's working on. Good evening, council. Um, <clears throat> One of the things uh, that we started initially is attempting to move everybody to direct deposit. Um, currently, all 155 full-time employees have moved. Uh, nine out of 10 city council members have moved direct to direct deposit. And all but one of our 15 pension employees have moved to direct deposit as well. So the reason for this is we are looking to move to um, a group called Accupay who will assist with our uh, current payroll process, which also includes uh, processing benefits, uh, tracking time, which has been an issue. There's nothing in our office currently that tracks time. I don't know how much time people use or have. I have no clue, and there's nothing that tracks that in our current system. So that's something that we are trying to uh, move towards and address as well. Um, we continue to work with 3D Financial to improve internal controls and to comply with SBOA requirements. Um, we just came back from a training, uh, myself and our accounts payable clerk, uh, Crystal Jones. We went to the Indiana League of Municipal Clerk Treasurers training, which was extremely helpful and eye-opening. <laughs> like, oh, wow. So very helpful, uh, definitely worthwhile to attend that. Um, one of the other big projects that our current intern, Abby Hill, has been working on is that she has been scanning the last 10 years worth of ordinances and resolutions to make them available online um, along with an index. And so we've been already doing that with 2022. And before she goes back to school, in August, we are hoping to have all of that available online as well. So that is currently where we are. Any questions? How long do you anticipate um, keeping Reedy Financial on? They are actually working with us as well um, on the budget process under a different contract. They're only, they were here one day in the last two weeks. So we are working with them on processes. We've got some issues with you know, parks is is a big revenue generator, but it also has a lot of opportunities. 
So we're trying to figure out where our largest opportunities lie and to close that gap so we have better, a better eye on the revenue and, and those items. So we're still working with them on those items, but they're only, they were, they've been here one day in the last actually two and a half weeks. So we are phasing them out, they're phasing out. We're just trying to narrow down and focus on, on those bigger issues before we, before they're out completely. Yeah, I would just say on the clerk treasurer front and the work that, that we're doing with the mayor's office and the clerk treasurer is that information management cybersecurity, processes and financial controls, um, improving those are long overdue. And so that is what she has really been concentrating on and the work that Reedy is assisting us with. And also bringing another layer and uh, added level of sophistication to the budgeting process so that that can be really more efficient um, and more thoughtful because as you know, our, our budget continues to grow, but our reliance on property tax levies it's getting smaller and smaller, and uh, I'm, I've got some concerns about it this year, particularly with high inflation and how property tax levies are, are calculated through a standard methodology. Uh, but a lot of work is happening in the clerk's office and the mayor's office to make some, some much needed process improvements. We'll get there, but it's not gonna happen overnight. It's, it's a year, year to two year process, honestly. Kudos to our intern. Hats off on the electronic, thank you. And the Miss Madison Regatta pageant candidate. So support her. Do we know when the uh, fund reports will be back online? We can, we can pull fund reports um, and we can pull appropriation reports. It's just appropriation reports are always subject to, they're not always 100% yeah, we can absolutely put them out there. I don't know where they were published previously, to be quite honest. Um, but We are going to do a deep dive with council, um, hopefully by the second meeting in July, for a mid-year review. We'll look at all the funds and appropriations, because the one thing that we, that we need to improve, if you remember last year, we did a lot of year-end transfers, and that really shouldn't be happening. Uh, so if we are more frequent about our conversations, not only with you, but specifically with department heads, we can see uh, where we are. And, and now that we're you know, getting some more regular financial reporting, uh, we're gonna do a mid-year review of all the departments. And I think that's a good you know, prelude into the, uh, the new budget cycle that's gonna start at the end of July. Since fund and appropriation reports are brought up, could you forward us the most recent additions of those. Thank you. Any more comments or questions for Katie? All right. Well, I, uh, I'm going to come up here to the podium and share with you a short presentation. I don't do this very often, but we spend a lot of time talking across the community about various things we're involved in and you know the last really the last several weeks we had two major meetings that I, I think were major one is hosted by our Department of Economic Development Tony and Alyssa put together a really good outreach uh, program with uh, our realtor group here in the city of Madison to let them know of all the different things that are happening across the community Tony I think you you had, I don't know how many, 25 or 30 people in attendance in attendance there, including including executives from Indianapolis and the Real Estate Association because so much is going on. Last week, I gave a presentation to the Rotary Club, and as I was putting together the presentation, you know, what, what really came about that was, I'm not going to give you the entire Rotary presentation because it took a long time. I'm going to give you the much more abbreviated version Many of you serve on different committees. You know, just in the city alone, there's over two dozen boards and committees. It requires over 100 volunteers. At the county, there's also boards and committees. All of you are serving in some capacity on a committee. But a lot of the city's transactional business and planning is happening at the Redevelopment Commission, the Planning Commission, the Board of Zoning Appeals, the Board of Public Works, uh, Historic District Board of Review, 
a lot of that transactional information, uh, the Board of Aviation Commissioners, the Port Authority, to name a few, is happening, you know, outside of what may or may not be, you know, coming across your desk. Certainly, if something's financial, like a, a bond instrument or an appropriation, it's going to land here. But I would just encourage you all to, uh, if you can't attend any of those other meetings, maybe watch a few select ones on the City of Madison YouTube channel. But there's so much going on, sidewalks, parks, uh, process improvements, uh, the few, and again, it's literally millions of dollars that's coming through our city. In fact, just this year alone, it'll be over $100 million, $100 million that's coming through the city. So I thought I would breeze through this for informational purposes for you guys. You may or may not be aware of some of these things. In fact, there's so many things going on. Toward the tail end, I just start listing 15 or 16 other things that we're working on. As part of this deep dive that I mentioned earlier, we also want to talk with you about what our priorities are going to be for the balance of 2022. Because we have a lot of things that we've started that have deadlines that have to finish by the end of this year, or things we started two years ago that are now coming to fruition this year because of all the partnerships. Again, I'm going to breeze through some of these things and hit the highlights. Um, economic development. What is economic development in 2022? Very, very different. As you know, when we came into office, we realigned the whole economic development infrastructure. Now we're talking about the quality of jobs, compensation. Uh, there's, there, there were six um, companies that received tax abatements on the report you saw earlier today. We structure economic development agreements very differently uh, in today's economic development environment where we're talking about how is that going to benefit the city? How does that create a higher quality of life? And we do a lot of capital stacking. We're looking for uh, not just the tax abatements when they come up, state funds, TIF financing. Uh, I mentioned Redevelopment Commission. That is one primary uh, group that oversees literally millions of dollars of different types of incentives that we structure for businesses and development to promote here in the community. Um, and all of this is about leveraging what we have. How do we take $2 million and make it $25 million? You've heard us talk a lot about the ready grant process. How do we create workforce and destination development plans? where we put in a, a, a portion of the funds, but 80 to 90% is really coming, 80 to 90% of that capital is coming from other sources. So again, economic development in today's world is very, very different than it was just a few years ago. Business development and placemaking is economic development. Um, as you've seen here, uh, we talk about something as simple as lights. A lot goes into creating lights on Main Street. But during COVID and also this year, uh, you've seen where we've really applied a lot toward how do we amplify the beauty of our downtown historic district or create tourism uh, and business for our hospitality industries. We do that year round by investing in what we have. On the right is also making our main street safer, uh, extending the life of the road until we get the federal highway grants. But again, a lot of time and planning and literally millions of dollars are going into Main Street. It's literally one of the prized assets of the city of Madison and is nationally recognized. Destination Madison. Last year, we literally worked uh, over the course of about 45 to 60 days to put together thoughtful workforce and destination development planning. That had to go through a scoring and uh, process with the Southern Indiana, Southern Indiana RDA to be eligible for the funds. I participated in the RDA's uh, state presentation committee. We were one of only five RDAs in the entire state that received the maximum grant of $50 million. Here, what we're doing is leveraging those dollars for additional capital investment. We put together a destination plan that is talking about restoring and renovating Crystal Beach. Uh, repurposing um, Bicentennial Park for a permanent amphitheater, acquiring property near the bridge for gateway development, acquiring the Ruler Grocery Store property so that we could control that uh, property 
and in a few months we will be we will be announcing uh, a new grocery store that is going to be occupying that space funding improvements to stabilize the Ohio theater so that it could get back into the community and be a contributing asset as well as the Mul Mulberry Street Arts Corridor which is about uh, focusing on arts and entertainment we have one of the largest uh, cultural arts districts in the entire state all of this is happening through a lot of planning and then investing but the key thing here is building capacity by leveraging our dollars this is a rendering of the neighborhood market this is that mulberry corridor and across the street is the kindness mural uh, the mass and area arts uh, alliance led that is going to be we've already um, been working on the financial plan to redo that and then also the redevelopment commission acquired the old ruler property and as i mentioned we will be uh, announcing an operator in the next few months blight elimination it's been one of the most significant things i think that we've done as a key initiative across the community eliminating blight uh, restoring our historic properties and what it took was the right partnerships with the right amount of incentives and this has been extremely successful and it checks all the boxes raises property values reduces crime improves quality of life and leverages dollars we've brought in more money uh, private capital to invest in our neighborhoods in the last two years the the first uh, five to six years of the program's history that has been very successful drive down one of our three or four uh, uh, designated revitalization areas and I think you'll see that there is a tremendous amount of new construction happening to improve our neighborhoods still more work to do right we got to work our way out of this but the great news is um, those partnerships that we're forming is really making a difference across the community sunrise crossing please join us on july the 12th we'll have a groundbreaking for a key initiative to develop the or redevelop i should say the 22 acres at the corner of michigan road and clifty drive be approximately 125 130,000 uh, square feet of new national retail space uh, approximately 192 much needed multifamily units but we're also working with NDOT to improve the Clifty Drive and Michigan Road intersections. That is part uh, of a major project along Clifty Drive for new paving, new sidewalks, new intersections, new development. All of that over the course of this year and next year will bring in literally over $100 million in new development. Uh, not to mention Super ATV, if you've been up on Michigan Road, you've already seen where they've broken ground on a major expansion of Super ATV that our Redevelopment Commission uh, and the City of Madison partnered with them on. Housing, we talk about how important housing is to our community because the last 20 years, 25 years, we've been underinvested in housing. We entered into a development agreement with Habitat uh, for Humanity for Jefferson County. On the left, you'll see a new six unit subdivision we will be essentially accelerating the pace of new home construction there from 10 years to two years. And what that will also do is allow us now to uh, reinvest in sidewalks and paving leading into that subdivision on Branch Street. On the right are uh, renderings of the new multifamily housing that will be known as the residences at Sunrise Crossing. So again, two partnerships uh bringing much needed housing to our community crystal beach restoration uh, you'll see in the middle picture there the elevator bank being built uh, on the left of that same image you'll see the new decking uh, that uh, just a year ago was completely unaccessible uh, deteriorated and on the right you'll see what the newly uh nearly i should say nearly completed restoration of the second floor that has not been available for public space for many many years what that is shaping up to look like and it's beautiful space there'll be a commercial kitchen there it's going to be a, a great ev event venue for our community however as you know uh, we've ran into uh, more deteriorated uh, issues with the pool basin itself we have uh, developed a, a plan of action, and now we're working on a financial plan to pay for the nearly $2 million in additional costs it's going to take to bring Crystal Beach back online and serve the community for at least another quarter century. But that 
is targeted to uh, uh, get underway by the end of this summer and for, for a, a, a reopening for the 2023 swimming season. Oak Hill neighborhood re revitalization, many talked about that a little bit ago. Uh, there's been new technology deployed in how sidewalks are made there, which has really sped up the job. How do you do an entire neighborhood in a matter of a few months? You have to deploy new technology. Uh, and when you deploy new technology, they can do things much more efficiently than manually uh, applied cement, for example, that also allowed for them to come in under our um, engineer's estimate, which then is allowing us to do more improvements, such as the storm drainage, which many had collapsed, but also park improvements. This is going to be a revitalized neighborhood and is our way of using the data we've collected from our uh, road ratings and the newly created sidewalk rating system so that we can make an impact on entire neighborhoods. Sunrise Golf Course upgrades, we've been working on that for the last two years. Um, uh, many golfers are telling me now the course is in the best condition they've ever played. We still have a ways to go to continue to eliminate operating deficits, deficits at Sunrise Golf Course. Uh, the facility itself is in the best condition it's been in for a very, very long time, maybe ever. We're continuing to work on improving the financial performance of the golf course, but happy to say that that's heading in the right trajectory too. Riverfront Super Overlook, you know, if there's one committee in town, there's a lot, for example, that promote the city of Madison. The Riverfront Development Committee's sole mission is to raise money to invest in our riverfront. And if you look over the last 30 years, what the riverfront has transformed itself into from industrial uh, riverfront to now uh, a recreational riverfront that's got literally everything under the sun, parks, dog park, pool, uh, restaurants, hospitality, hotels, um, hosts to literally hundreds of thousands of people that come to Madison every year. Uh, they, if, uh, if you were able to last weekend, they had the uh, one of their primary fundraisers to help raise money for the Riverfront Super Overlook, and they're going to bid on this project after uh, after this year's regatta. This will be in place of where the current judges stand is now, but that'll create a tremendous uh, new look for Madison's Riverfront, but also take care of some much needed uh, bank erosion. Quality of place, that's, what, that's the name of the game. That's what differentiates Madison. Uh, we've got to invest in creating a quality of place. Uh, people move here, jobs follow the people when they move. We're now in a perfect scenario where those professionals who can work and live anywhere can choose Madison to, to live, and that level of income is, is going to help drive our economy into the future. Here's just a few corporate sponsors. And then I do want to mention our partnership with Jefferson County. We have an interlocal agreement with them where the city of Madison uh, acts as the lead economic development organization for Jefferson County. We've already uh, brought, I think, two businesses uh, to Jefferson County that are in the buffer zone. And then you probably read where there was a third that was just recently, recently announced, uh, Red Ball Recycling, that will be on Wilson Avenue. So more investment in partnership with Jefferson County. They also have funds to help financially support our preservation and economic development efforts. So we're happy to be partnering with them. And here is a few of our partners regionally. We are looking at our community as a regional destination not just the city. We are the gateway to Indiana. We are literally one of the regional gems for a five county regional development authority that we are part of, Jefferson, Clark, Floyd, Scott, Washington. We partner with IEDC. They help provide a tremendous amount of capital support. In fact, they'll be here next Thursday uh, for a, a statewide meeting that we'll be hosting uh, with them at uh, the Cotton Mill. What are we? Clean, safe, beautiful, identifying new revenue sources, modernizing operations. You can see down there between iWorks, Rec Desk, and Reserve America, we're improving uh, reservations by 20% or more at our campground. If you haven't seen the upgrades at the campground, drive through the campground. You'll already see a noticeable difference as compared uh, to what it's been in the past. Our revenues are up there, and it's actually uh, self-sustaining uh, the capital investments that we're making 
at the campground. We're looking for a return on investment. We're doing a tremendous amount of capital planning, and the name of the game is quality of life, quality of place, capacity building, and leveraging our dollars. zip through a couple of these slides. Do want to mention the importance of the Madison Railroad and Airport. Uh, Madison is so unique that we have all the infrastructure to grow our industry. On the left you'll see a new multi-million dollar project uh, with the, within the Madison Port Authority and that is the bridge replacement at Graham Creek. On the right you'll see um, Madison Municipal Airport. You'll see the hangar development. We just finished through partnership with Redevelopment Commission a major water initiative to bring more water supply and volume to help fuel the growth at the airport. And then about a year ago, uh, with Congressman Pence's assistance, we were able to get Department of Defense approval for a northern, a northern runway approach uh, that the uh, uh, municipal airport had been seeking for almost seven years. So we are really thrilled that, to bring that to the community because that opens up a tremendous amount of uh, transportation opportunities at, a, at our airport. Just a couple of weeks ago, Redevelopment Commission uh, agreed to sell approximately 20 acres uh, to the Mass and Port Authority uh, on Industrial Drive that they own, and that will be for a railroad-sponsored transloading facility. So new capital investment in that area Rail is so critical uh, to growing our economic development, particularly industry, in, in the city of Madison and Jefferson County. And the fact that we had that property, already had a port authority with a, uh, with a rail operation, and uh, the, the conversations uh, that we're having with regards to making that a strategic part of our economic development has been extremely, extremely invaluable over the course of just the last several months. We'll be turning the railroad from, you know, mostly car storage and a little bit of freight to a lot more on the freight side and really connecting it to uh, other employment centers and other industries. Highlights on the city of Madison. Lots of commuters coming into our community every single day to work. If we can capture 10% of them, we will grow our population another 10%. We've erased a half a century decline uh, in population just in the last uh, two and a half years. Right now we're hovering right around 12,500. But if you look at what's going on regionally, we operate like a much bigger city. Our population can double and triple in a weekend when we have a different festival. Uh, the new uh, retail and housing developments coming to our community, they're not only looking at the city of Madison metrics, they're looking at us as a regional destination. And the counties that surround us will be providing support uh, for the retail and housing that's there. So a little over 4% population growth literally just in the last two and a half years, which is great. And according to Placer AI, in 2021, 350,000 uh, visitors to, the, to our community. Other projects, here's a sample of other things we're working on. There's 15, we could talk more about these, but uh, all of these are capital intensive, which require capital planning, which require us to leverage our dollars. Super ATV, been a fantastic uh, partner with the City of Madison, continues to grow. Park master planning, a campground, Rucker improvements. Uh, we are making great progress on our Cricket Creek flood mitigation. In fact, the Army Corps of Engineers will be back in town this week for some more assessments of the Cricket Creek watershed our clean drinking water initiative, which uh, we've not made an invest, sizable investment in it in over two decades. Sidewalks on Clifty Drive, West Main Street, uh, traffic calming. Other things we said we would do would be update our historic um, property survey. That hasn't been done in a couple of decades, as well as our design guidelines. So there's a special consultant and historic district board review committee that's going through our design guidelines. They'll be making some recommendations to the board and then those will in eventually end up here. Lots of public safety priorities, lots of branding. Uh, again, putting Madison on the map as a regional destination. Your support's critical. I went through those slides really, really fast, but just wanted to let you know that 
you know, watch some of those other meetings, attend some of those other meetings, because a lot of cities transactional, uh, and, and particularly a lot of the cities investment planning isn't happening here. It's happening in those some of those other things where we've got other boards and committees where lots of other volunteers are involved. Uh, as I mentioned, if it's financial, if it's ordinance or policy related, and we have a lot of that to take care of, it will, it will end up in front of you all. But uh, don't hesitate to reach out to our office. If you have questions on anything, uh, please review our quarterly newsletters that Hannah publishes that talks a, a lot about these, po uh, about these uh, projects we're working on, what difference they're making in our, in our community. Uh, I see you all out all the time at different uh, events across the community. And, and again, there's a lot of people involved in, in literally creating what is an exceptional uh, community and uh, uh, just a destination, which we call which we call we call home. But other people coming to Madison can't believe that we could see see this community every single day. I'll pause there, answer any questions you might have, and then we'll get back to our regular agenda. I just want to make sure I don't start a rumor. Did I hear you right? A grocery store announcement maybe before the end of the year. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bought that property so that we could control it, and, I knew that we and had it. I we've got a lot this. of things going on. But parallel and simultaneous, we're always working on grocery store. And uh, uh, you know, I asked Tony today, "Can we do it in 90 days?" It might take it might take four months, but it, but it, but we're targeting 90 days from now. Okay. We recently were granted another uh, liquor license, uh, which again was was very important to attracting an operator for a grocery. There was only one grocery store. Uh, alcohol retail license left, and um, the Jefferson County Alcohol Board and the uh, state uh, ATC granted the city of Madison that license. Okay. For the overlook, uh, does that include any ramp improvements? Um, I don't believe it includes ramp except for an erosion, but they do have plans. Tony is still here. He is still here. He could probably elaborate more, but there are plans to improve the design and accessibility for um, the boats that regularly visit the community, such as the American Countess, American Queen, American Princess. Because right now, as you know, we have a kind of a very awkward uh, uh, docking system for them. So uh, we are looking at ways to improve that, and, and that is part of the overlook planning. Tony, you want to add anything to that? We are currently in uh, discussion with American Voyages for uh, some exclusivity rights to docking here in Madison as a part of that, looking at some additional improvements to make uh, for what the mayor said, a much more enjoyable um, embarkment, and, uh, debarkment, and embarkment. I'm learning all these new terms. Disembarkment. Disembarkment, embarkment. I, they've got all these fancy terms when you talk about boats, right? So, um, but basically, um, a, a nicer environment to welcome their guests. Uh, also will help eliminate some of the congestion that happens on the boat dock uh, when they're there uh, for our pleasure boaters uh, as well as uh, Rock and Thunder. So more on that to come. Might as well stay up there, Tony. The transloading facility, any timing on that? <clears throat> um, the uh, outline would hopefully the property will be closing here in the month of July, the transfer and close uh, to the uh, railroad. Uh, they are working now currently on preliminary engineering on that transload facility. I don't have an exact timeline, but it, it's imminent within the next, you know, few, few months to a year. Okay. They're going to start Is the Port Authority going to operate that? The Port Authority will operate that, correct. And if you notice on this, they're also in the conversations where uh, we're really prime, lo we're at a prime location um, on the CSX line that runs east and west up there in North Vernon uh, for railroad repair services. We're ideally located between three major um, facilities for, for those. And we're currently working with a potential um, third party uh, locomotive repair company that has interest in Madison to locate here. And so this would be the site for that as well, along with some other improvements that may have to come with that. Um, but it's really exciting to see uh, interest in our railroad um, with the upgrades that they just made and increasing the weight limits to the, to the rail lines where CSX sees this as a viable operation in or out in, in the economic development world saying, hey, this, this, this railroad's here and there's opportunities. So 
this is one of those that came um, through through that kind of partnership. So we're doing a really good job there on Mecca and Doe um, with the railroad right now. Anything else, Josh? That's it for now. Council, anything else? And I'll return you back to your regular programming. Council, we have one bill on second reading. I'll turn it over to Clerk Treasurer for this. Microphone, please. Sorry. Thank you. And ordinance, <laughs> ordinance number 2022-9, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, amending the zoning map of the City of Madison, Indiana. Uh, the plan commission was approached by the owners of one of these parcels. Um, there are two residential structures that had been zoned as general business, um, and when you sell a residential structure that's zoned as general business, it can create issues um, with financing. So they sought to have their property rezoned as residential, and the plan commission um, approached them. No objections or, or comments. Um, so I would move to suspend the rules and move. I'm going to give the time for public comment. Is there uh, oh, yeah. We're on the second reading, but are there any comments or questions on, <coughs> on the ordinance itself? In public? Move on. Thank you, Council. I'd move to suspend the rules and move to third reading. Okay. okay. Second. Second. Who's my second? Sorry. Josh. Josh. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Move on to third reading. Ordinance number 2022-9, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, amending the zoning map of the City of Madison, Indiana. Roll call vote. Tevinal? Yes. Krebs? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Chatham? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Dan Dottillo? Yes. Thank you, Council. Moving on, is there anything uh, miscellaneous that council wants to present to the community? I just wanted to ask Mindy, I know we brought this up earlier in the year. I love the, of course, the, the red, white, and blue lighting on Main Street. And someone had approached us about the West Main. And did you say that we would put that in our new budget so that maybe next year the businesses passed? It goes. Tell does me it again, go to which lights exactly are you talking about? Any of the decorated lights. Oh. Like right now, it's red, white, and blue. Yeah. You know, Valentine's Day, it was the hearts. Did we say we were going to put money in the budget, like our upcoming budget, to be able to take it all the way to Craigmont Street? I thought, and is that uh, Hannah left? I thought we were already doing it all the way to Craigmont. Um, Not on all the lights. Some the uh, Christmas lights we did. Okay, but I thought so. I don't believe we did on the seasonal lights. These, the um, I know they're taking to the bridge. I'm not how, sure how far they're going west. I, <laughs> I think that it is as long as the lights last. <laughs> I think it's to Vine, maybe, or even Broadway. Like, I drove it the they're other night. They're not Broadway done Street. putting them up. Broadway, okay. Yeah, they're not done putting them up. Oh, okay. By far. So I can okay. confirm with you if they're going all the way to Cragmont. I think that's the plan, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Thank you. But it's always our intention to do, you know, from bridge to at least Cragmont. Okay. Um, sometimes there's supply issues or money issues or whatever, but, but it's not our intention to slight anybody. We want everybody to have the same. Right. Thank you. I just know, you know, we have more and more businesses opening down there now. The trolley barn's open. And Absolutely. And I want them to get the same, you know, hoopla. Yep. All right. Thank you. Great question. Anything else? Uh, not sure if you were going to hold this for your uh, spiel at the end, but could you give a recap of the senator's visit yesterday? Uh, I would love to, and those were going to be some of my remarks. Because, you can hold uh, it then if you'd like. <laughs> and Josh and I, Josh and I were able to uh, help the community host U.S. Senator Todd Young. He was actually at Grody receiving a manufacturer's uh, a motor equipment manufacturers association recognition as a champion for manufacturing and. He made some great remarks there, and, and so did Dominic and, and uh, others as hosting that particular award. 
just the importance that manufacturing plays, not only nationally, but especially in Indiana, and especially in Madison and Jefferson County, and you know, not f but not for good policy and regulation that promotes innovation, on entrepreneurship uh, that Senator Young is involved in, um, particularly uh, post-COVID, where there was some special tax legislation that spurred a lot of investment uh, by our manufacturers to help keep the economy going during COVID and hence uh, keep our employment uh, going during COVID. Uh, Senator Young was recognized for that. Anything else you want to add relative to Josh about the award? And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about his visit. No, that's about it. You're going to go on with the visit here to yes. the police station? Yes. So we had a very busy afternoon. Afterwards, um, Senator Young was really gracious with, the, with his time. And we had a public safety roundtable um, hosted by Chief Wallace at Madison Police Department. We had representatives from uh, all the all schools who have school resource officers, uh, Sheriff's Department, Madison Police Department, our Madison Fire Department. And we talked about, it was really a listening. It was less about, you know, Senator Young talking. It was more about listening. And really what came across loud and clear was the fact that our first line uh, defenders, whether they're in the schools or in the community, are dealing with uh, frequent mental health and substance use uh, disorder issues that are frankly pretty overwhelming, I think, not only for our community, but statewide and nationally. There's, turn on the news and you will hear that as a regular topic and what can be done about it. And you know, our, our officers were talking about you know, what's happening at the border with regards to drugs, you know, coming across because of, you know, uh, illegal crossings at the border, find their way to uh, the larger cities and then find their way in the form of fentanyl and uh, meth to our communities. And it is, it is literally wrecking our communities, but also creating a tremendous cost for all of our communities. If you think about what's involved in the enforcement apparatus between uh, city and county police, keeping the schools safe, dealing with issues that our, that our students are facing, uh, gun safety, um, incarceration, criminal justice system, prosecution, community corrections. It is a multi, multi-million dollar toll on a community the size of Madison. And of course, in a year from now, we'll be having a ribbon cutting, so to speak, of the new Justice Center, which is a $45 million jail uh, here in Jefferson County. So it was a really good visit. And uh, I also presented Senator Young with uh, a key to the city and thanked him for all the work that he's been doing across the state of Indiana and for the city of Madison and working hard to bring dollars to strengthen school, school safety, uh, but also give resources to our uh, police officers. We also did talk about one other thing that, that's happening that um, we still have to figure out, and uh, this will you know, impact our, our officer, or I, sh I was going to say officers, but Officer Perry, who is here tonight, but uh, in a very short time, in a couple of weeks, a new law goes into effect that essentially is a uh, permitless uh, concealed carry uh, legislation. And we still have to figure out how that impacts community policing. So we'll look for more information on that. But that was um, uh, House Bill 1296 on firearm matters. Uh, we've been conducting fire on sa firearm safety uh, courses through Mass and Police Department for the community, and those have been very well attended. Uh, but as a police department, we need to figure out um, you know, how do we keep our community safe under that legislation, and how do we keep our officers safe who are engaging you know, uh, in very diff dangerous situations where, where now it, uh, they're going to be certainly more reliant on data collection for those who are not eligible to carry a firearm. That's going to be the distinction here, those who are eligible, those who are not eligible. So I think that there's a lot of learning to um, uh, learning and, and, and certainly processes to talk about, but that's something that is going to uh, uh, really uh, you know, bubble up as a, as a top priority as we continue to focus on public safety. A couple of other things I want to mention, too, is just reiterate July 12th is a groundbreaking for uh, the shops at Sunrise Crossing. We're all 
uh, excited about that and we will be announcing the retailers the national retailers who will be committing to invest in Madison in a in just a week we will also be enjoying a full week of activities associated with the Madison Regatta uh, starting on Sunday and literally every day through the following Sunday there will be uh, events on Main Street across the community pageants uh, remote control hydroplane racing which is also fun if you've never had a chance to do that uh, a lot of fantastic work is happening across the community we had a good meeting today uh, talking about our event planning and how do we make this the safest uh, regatta and certainly what changes you know should we be incorporating particularly for traffic management you know in the past past years traffic management after parade and after fireworks show where you literally have thousands and thousands of people downtown uh, Chief Wallace has put together a really thoughtful traffic management plan which Hannah will be communicating out uh, to the public as to what to expect because it'll be a little bit different the goal will be get people out as quickly and safely as possible but have it be an intentional um, approach and there will be lots of mass and police department officers on duty downtown and on the hilltop to help manage traffic to get people out of, out of the community um, I talked to uh, Mr. Minky here a little while ago but I also want to announce that our goal is to by the and we're going to coordinate with with uh, uh, Dan and Paula and, and their family uh, to announce the, the recipient of the 2022 John Minkey Award. Uh, and we'll have that ceremony probably at the second meeting in July. And at the next meeting, I know um, Chief Wallace will want to be here recognizing some heroism with the officers and then also swearing in our newest officer, Andrew, Andrew Gibbs. So a lot going on. Happy to answer any questions, and I will thank you for all your questions tonight. I'll answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, I'll wrap it up. Sorry. Darn, I got so excited. He went He went straight to the mayor's comments, and then I – sorry, Josh. I'm going to butt in right in front of Lisa. Okay. Um, public <laughs> comments. You've already had your turn. I, I've been camera hog tonight. Darn it. I wanted to follow up on the councilwoman's question that through the magic of technology, I can tell you that yes, lights are going all the way to Craigmont, and they could use some volunteers to help hang them. Our street department is really busy with regatta. It takes a tremendous amount of. So if anybody wants to volunteers, regatta, so. wink, wink, to help hang lights, uh, just call Hannah at City Hall. She would love the help. We want to do it when it's 100 degrees outside too. Uh, we're going to do that. No, um, uh, Officer Perry is here because he's our Sergeant of Arms. We always have a, have a Sergeant of Arms at every council meeting. He is performing that role tonight uh, in uh, uh, in replacement of Chief Wallace, who isn't here tonight. And uh, we will we will be recognizing officers at the next meeting. I like to be the good news girl. Appreciate you, Jordan. So since the last council meeting, Carla is aware of this. We made the louisville news channel charlie was interviewed for pickleball the fastest growing sport in america so the guy came from wdrb and ended up staying in madison like three hours a day and charlie thought it was like a five minute telephone conversation uh you know of course you had to do hinkles if you're going to come to madison anyway um he was reached out to by somebody else that carl and tim know and so he came and did a whole special on pickleball and how it's growing and it's not nude pickleball just so we clarify that in Madison Indiana because that's the newest trend Charlie's assured me we're not going to that but anyway we got a, a good news spot on uh, WDRB news came here and interviewed them and uh, more about pickleball that his slant was on was about community and how we've been able to build a community around that pickleball community. Uh, talk to some people who've come out of depression, people who've come out of strokes and seizures, who've picked up the pickleball paddle and kind of raised awareness to how that's been a better quality of life for them, where a lady across the river uh, was being treated for severe depression and she's come to pickleball and built new friendships and stuff. Uh, 
Dougie Fox talking about coming off of a stroke and what that's been able to do for him. So it became a lot more about pickleball and more about a community that they are becoming. I guess you might know that I'm going to say out of that, it came lots of text messages and phone calls to Charlie because for some reason, you know, I guess because he gives free lessons on Thursdays uh, of when can we play pickleball? How do we learn how to play pickleball? And he gives a free lesson on Thursdays from noon to one. That also meant the only time you can play pickleball at the Brown Gym when it's air conditioned, which we appreciate that so much now, is from 10 to noon. So if you're retired, if you're a pickleball player, if you're still working, and we get lots of messages, as we, I'm like, oh, when super ATV people start calling you, Charlie, we might get something done. Because there's a lot of people that are in the workforce that want to know when they can play pickleball in the evenings at the Brown Gym. So Carla knows the next thing at Parks Department will be Lisa saying, when can we talk to the Parks Department and then bump up to the City Council about if we can increase hours so that they have the opportunity to get in the Brown Gym in the evenings because we got tons of people in the workforce saying, I want to learn how to do that. I can't do it because it's limited hours. So Charlie would volunteer. You know, Bob Canada, we've already heard, has been said he'd be a volunteer for a dollar a year to be able to be the manager of the Brown Gym. So just a heads up, we got great press. We got lots of people commenting on how it's helped their mental health, their social health, which is all what we're talking about. That's why we love being here. So that's the first uh, agenda for the pickleball movement in town is just keep growing that. Uh, the only other thing I was going to talk about, and Mindy will be able to answer this like Johnny on the spot, because we were so excited. It was Friday before the garden tour, but they got the sidewalks done on Baltimore. Cause I keep telling her, that's the worst one in town. I'm telling you, it is. So Beth Lewis and her out there chewing, cheering them on that they got that done. So they're coming around, we're assuming, second, and they're going to go like four houses in and stop there to the alley. It's, it looks like to the alley. If they went six more houses which happens to include mine, but my sidewalk is fine in front of my house, but in front of my neighbor, Jane Lorenz, there's no sidewalk, it's mud. If they went six more houses, they could complete that entire second street all the way down, which is new in the 800 block that they did. Okay, it's six houses. It's marked to the alley. It's marked to John and Lori, where John and Lori bought it. But, yeah, my, oh, Mindy will be right on that. Thank you. So, if you're walking, there's a sign. I've told Tony this sign makes no sense. It says trail ends. And there's no, you don't know where the trail begins. But if you're walking Main Street, the sidewalk ends. And then you just walk in grass to you get over to where it says trail ends. So it's, I'm thinking when you all work on the new gateway coming into town, that area that I'm talking at about will be addressed. Well. It seems, I know there's, I know it's messy we because have, of. Yeah, I might mention we have, we did sidewalk asset management plan. We have nine miles of sidewalks that need repair, replacement, ADA improvement. What you're referring to is the NDOT project for the bridge approach. And we did, I mean, when we came into office, we did talk with them about the plans of why they discontinued the sidewalk. There were some ADA issues that they had expressed, but the reason the trail ends is because where the old uh, vehicular traffic went, where you would turn down you know, Baltimore, then on the second, and then over to Harrison, that's actually the pedestrian path according to the NDOT plan. It just looks confusing because you have a sidewalk to nowhere and it stops. So. Um, I would just say that it would be great if we could continue that sidewalk all the way down and connect it and it's something we'll certainly talk about. We just have a lot of really bad sidewalks that have to be dealt with that aren't even in, aren't even passable, unfortunately. But we'll work on it. Just keep that. Yeah, absolutely. So, Sidewalks are uh, uh, one of the most important things we can do to help because we have a very pedestrian-friendly community and, and we have... Oh, 
We have a beautiful historic community. Unfortunately, a lot of our sidewalks are historic too. Thank you for those comments. Anybody else would like to uh, address council or mayor's office? I would. Um, I just wanted to let city council know that the ordinances for 2021, the updates to your uh, city of Madison code books have arrived. So if you'd like to bring those in, um, I can get those updated for you. And we are moving to a semi-annual process for that as well. So your code books are getting updated more frequently. Cool. Okay. Anything else by anyone else? Tillo. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Um, enjoy your re enjoy your Fourth of July weekend. We'll talk to you right after that.